What's up, guys? Pet Man, Matt Marr here, Carolina Varsity, the solo edition of the best to last. Uh, Dale cannot be with uh, me tonight. However, um, our thoughts and prayers, and I'm sure yours, are with his family. Uh, he had a death in the family, and um, that's why he's not here. Um, we'll go ahead and jump into this week's best to last, uh, week two. Uh, coming in at number 22, the Guarantee Wildcats, they lost 38-7 uh, to Hopewell at their uh, home opener. Uh, Coach Melvin Peterson, uh, he's got a heck of a job on his hands trying to uh, change the culture and uh, end that long losing streak they've had over there. They got Harding this week. Uh, they go on the road. Uh, so it'll be enough, another tough challenge uh, to stop the Rams and uh, running back of ours crouching that one. Uh, number 21, we have Philip O'Berry dropping two spots from last week. Uh, they lost 63-20 to 20 to East Mac at home. Um, Coach Witherspoon was gracious enough to let us come by and uh, watch some of his practice uh, last week. We appreciate that. And um, he's got a heck of a rebuilding job uh, to do there, get his players uh, into the program. And it's his first time being a head coach, uh, former offensive coordinator at Cutperson, where they had a lot of success. Uh, so in time, I think he will get it done. Uh, but, you know, they had some transfers, and they're trying to uh, recover and get established right now. Uh, number 20, they didn't play last week, so there's no change in their ranking. That's Porter Ridge. Uh, Porter Ridge plays Piedmont this week um, in their home opener and season opener for that reason. And um, there's a lot of excitement down there. Coach Mike Hertz uh, was a defensive coordinator on the uh, teams that had a lot of success going deep in the playoffs. And um, a lot of people felt like he should have had that job the first time it came up. Uh, but, you know, from what I saw in the scrimmage with them, they, they looked – you know, pretty good. It looked like they had a schedule, and, um, you know, they, they could be a team to watch here uh, moving forward. Uh, number 19, moving up two spots after their big win over Ganger is uh, Hopewell. Hopewell won 38-7, uh, giving Coach Herlocker his first win at the school. And um, they're going on to play Lake Norman this week in a game where, um, you know, you can kind of feel like Hopewell doesn't have anything to lose. Uh, they're 1-0, and uh, they're a young team. But obviously they got it going in the right direction. Um, you know, that's a great job for Hopewell. And if they can somehow, um, I, you would call it an upset because Lake Norman's been in the playoffs a, a few times in a row. If they win that game against Lake Norman, you know, that's that would be a big win for, for them, most definitely. Uh, number 18, you have the Harding Rams. Uh, no change in their ranking. They had a tough loss. They went on the road to play uh, Huff, which is their top five school um, in the area. Uh, they lost 54-6, to six, had some issues with turnovers. Uh, but the good thing is uh, they're playing at home this week in front of their own fans and uh, the band of gold. And, um, you know, it should be a good time over there for them to uh, try to get back on track against Garrett this week. Uh, coming in number, uh, number 17, uh, no change in their ranking either. Uh, the Olympic Trojans, Olympic lost uh, big to Butler 55-6. to six. Uh, They were down 48 nothing at halftime. And, uh, it's, you know, it's tough. Butler's a very, very good team this year. Um, we had them ranked number two last week. And, um, you know, it's, it's not a lot of shame in losing, you know, to Butler. But there are some things uh, going on with Olympic that I'm sure Dale could um, expand on if he was here with me. But, um, you know, they got to try to get it turned around and get the, get the ship righted over there. Hopefully they can, uh, you know, correct that this week. Uh, number 16, no change in their ranking either. Um, Providence Panthers, uh, they lost to Charlotte Latin 37-21 in the kickoff classic on Saturday uh, down at Memorial Stadium. Um, uh, tight end Drake DeLulius did not play in that game. He's probably uh, their best player. So, you know, it's kind of hard to go into such a big environment, a big game like that without your best player to try to, you know, get things done. And Charlotte Latin is a very good private school team in their own right. So, you know, it's not a lot of shame losing that game, uh, but they got to try to bounce back this week. They got Vance, and um, that will not be easy going on the road up to um, IBM Drive for sure. Uh, number 15, uh, they dropped one spot this week is West Charlotte. They lost 30-13 to to Southeast Guilford. Uh, the game that a lot of people probably didn't get a lot of coverage on. Um, I was told by, you know, some people I know over there that they did play well in spots. Um but uh, Ja'Cory Reeves, the receiver, did not play in that game. And hopefully he'll be back uh, this week of the big West Side rivalry game with uh, West Charlotte coming up. 
Number 14, dropping one spot in their rankings are the Independence Patriots. They went on the road, uh, lost to Dutch Fort 45-0. Uh, Tom Knotts, their old coach, is now at Dutch Fort. And, um, you know, Dutch Fork's a really good team. And, you know, it's going to be a tough game on top of everything else that's been going on with Independence. Um, however, you know, the Patriots, are, they're going on the road again this week. They're playing Scotland County. And um, star running back Zamir White. Uh, probably one of the best junior running backs in the nation. So, you know, it doesn't get any easier. It's another challenge for those guys and, um, out in Independence. Uh, number 13, uh, dropping one spot this week is North Mech. Uh, they lost to Lake Norman at home 34-12. to um, Another school that's had to deal with some things in a different light. Um, you know, it's kind of hard to um, focus on, you know, football with everything that's going on there. And, um you know, week one can be kind of tricky, especially with all these um, circumstances around it. So hopefully, um, you know, things can kind of get back to normal for North Mac <clears throat> as they go into a, a big game this week with Cox Mill at home. Uh, moving up three spots, despite losing, is Rocky River at number 12. Um, they lost 42-21 to to Richmond Senior at a game I attended. And a lot of people, including us, didn't know what to expect from Rocky River, but they have uh, talent. They don't have great big numbers, but the numbers they have are talented. And, you know, they, they were in that game. It was 28-21 late third quarter before um, Richmond kind of made a big play with the punt return that kind of broke it open that Rocky River couldn't come back from. But this is a team that displayed a, a lot of ability and um, I moved them up three spots for that reason. And um, the teams under them um, primarily did not play well in week one. And Rocky River did in uh, spots in that game. So that's why I moved them up to number 12 despite the loss. And Richmond is a very quality opponent. I believe they're a top five, um, or not top five, but, you know, top 10 team in the state right now. Uh, number 11, uh, dropping one spot is West Mech. And, um, Coach Davis and those guys had Vance down 34-20 uh, deep in the fourth quarter, but, you know, you all know the story by now of how um, Vance was able to come back, get that game to overtime, and then win it. Uh, one of the things that a team that is wanting to take the next step, they have to learn how to win, you know, those close games and those big situations. And West Mac has a lot of talent. Um, I believe they got very good coaches, including Coach Davis. And, um, you know, they'll learn from that. And they'll bounce back, and, um, you know, they're going to be right there in it. And they've got a, the big West Side rivalry, like I mentioned earlier, um, against West Charlotte this week. And, you know, when those teams get together, you can't, you know, look at the records or what happened the week before because, you know, you kind of just throw those things out the window and um, see what happens. Uh, all right, so we're at the top ten. Uh, number 10 this week, moving up one spot is Myers Park. Uh, they had an impressive victory, 34-7 over Country Day in the uh, kickoff classic on Saturday. And, um, you know, their offense, I, I think, is is really, really clicking uh, early in the season. And that's good to see uh, between the receivers and Bowick and Patrick, the quarterback and Davidson, and the running game getting going and a hard-hitting defense that's hard to run on. Um, they got a big game this week with Audrey Kell. And um, I think that game is, is really going to be something to watch. Uh, two teams that are, are playing well. They got come both coming off big wins. It should be a good one. Uh, no change in their ranking. Uh, number nine is A.L. Brown, but they did have an impressive win, obviously, in the Bell game against their rival Concord, uh, showcasing a hard-hitting, fast defense and an offense that uh, was making the most of their opportunities set up by that defense. Um, Coach Newsom. You know, you never can count him out. Uh, heck of a coach. And um, expecting probably some, some bigger things from A.O. Brown this year. Uh, team to watch. That is outside of Charlotte, but um, they've got some, some real talent on that squad. Uh, number eight, uh, no change in their ranking. Uh, impressive win over a Barry is East Mech. Uh, they won 63-20. They piled up over 400 rushing yards on the ground. And I think they had another maybe 150 passing uh, you're almost approaching 600 yards of offense in a football game. And, you know, I don't care who the opponent is. That's that's very impressive. Um, but they got a test this week going against South Mech. And, um, you know, in their own right, won a uh, big game uh, against a, a probably a, a tougher opponent. And um, 
you know, we'll get to them in a second, but that's going to be another good game to watch this week. Uh, number seven, uh, dropping one spot is Charlotte Catholic. They lost 20 to 13 to Charlotte Christian. Uh, Christian is a well, well coached football team. Coach Eastet's been there a long time. And, um, you know, those, those guys are really fundamentally sound. And I saw the uh, no huddle offense that gave Catholic trouble in the first half. But, you know, once Catholic uh, made the adjustments to it in the second half, you know, they, they really played well defensively. Uh, offensively, um, you know, sometimes it takes longer for the offense to come together in week one. And, you know, Coach Bartowitz, like I said in the forum, and his staff, uh, they are excellent coaches. And um, you're going to see a big improvement from week one to week two for these guys. And they got their home opener this week against Providence Day in a game that, you know, they're probably favored in to uh, win. Uh, number six this week is Audrey Kell. They move up one spot, and they won 30-27 to over their rival Weddington. Uh, that's a very big win for Audrey Kell. Uh, Weddington is always a team in 3A or 3AA, excuse me. They go deep in the playoffs with uh, Coach Carson, who's a very, very good defensive uh, oriented head coach and an offense that's that's tough to stop and they're very efficient. So this is a very, very good win for Audrey Kell. Um, like I said, they've got the uh, big game with Morris Park this week. Um, and it's really going to show us where these two teams stand uh, within you know the city of Charlotte. All right, top five. Number five, uh, no change in their ranking. And actually going to have no changes in none of these guys. Top five is the same from last week. Uh, number five is the Vance Cougars. Uh, came back and won in overtime over West Mech. And that shows a lot. Because this Vance team has been through so many uh, close, disappointing losses. And this is how you see the growth in the team. They get in the same situation, yet they come out on the other side of it. And our Coach Brand's got to be happy with that. Um, he's probably not happy giving up 34 points, but <laughs> you put up 41, and, you know, we knew coming into this uh, season Vance could really score, and they showed that. And um, they got Providence this week, and um, I think it's going to be a tough matchup for Providence to match up with the offensive weapons Vance has. Um, for Providence to pull that up, so they're going to have to um, – really get some offense going and score against advanced defense that's talented, but they're kind of young and still learning right now. Uh, number four, South Mech. Uh, they won 27-21 over Marvin Ridge in a uh, very tight and uh, entertaining ball game. Uh, running back Travis Prince came on in the second half, had uh, over 100 yards rushing. Uh, I got to get those official stats for him when we do players of the week uh, soon. Uh, Donnie Both and uh, Antonio Wallace have really established a good connection uh, throwing and catching the football and on uh, that defense is still uh, stepping up in big spots and making big stops. Uh, number three, Huff. They won over Harding like I mentioned earlier, 54-6. to six. Um, For Huff, they got Mooresville this week. That's a rival game. Uh, Mooresville struggled against West uh, I think they lost 12 or maybe 16-8. to eight. I can't remember exactly. But um, Mooresville struggled on offense and um, you know, Huff, we all know they're they're really in tune and sound on both sides of the ball, so they gotta be the favorite going into that uh that game. I believe it's at Mooresville this week. And um uh, number two, Butler. And um uh, they got a, a really big game for us <laughs> this week. Uh they won over Olympic and we mentioned that before. Um they have a lot of offensive firepower and um I don't think a lot of people outside of the realm of high school football fans uh, hardcore fans know what Butler has this year and um, you know this is a huge huge game with Mallet Creek um, both um, kind of the torch bearers for the city of Charlotte the last few years in terms of championships and this is at Butler um, I would get there early the gates are opening at 5 and of course once we do that video you will get into more details about that game but number one is Mallet Creek also. Uh, they went down to Dillon, as everyone knows. They won a, a tough ball game, 7-3. to three. Uh, Had some calls go against them, to say the least. Um, but you get out of there with a win. Um, that school down there had won 37 games in a row, uh, three state titles in a row. And that's very impressive. Um, to go out and, number one, schedule that kind of game, and number two, go down there and win it. That, that's, that speaks bounds. That speaks a, a lot to Coach Palmer and what his staff and players are doing in that program, which has all been, you know, well-documented um, throughout this early part of the season. 
So that's our best to last uh, for this week. And um, stay tuned for the uh, game breakdown videos. We'll be doing them uh, very soon and we'll have them up on the site. I uh, appreciate you guys' uh, dedication and support. Uh, thank you. You're the, you're the best fans that um, anyone can have. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man.